So let's bring it to real estate. Yeah. Yes. First to real estate agents, mm -hmm. because for people who are your clients who really absorb a lot of other people's fear, paranoia, you know, I know we, we wear a million hats. Mm -hmm. We, we, and we always have to be super, we can't just like be expressive. We can't say what we want to say like the kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to be classier than correct. that and yeah. politically correct <laughs> and follow the rules and do that. And sometimes you just want to say, hey, you're being a douchebag right now. I would you know? say in those instances, it's really from a mindset perspective, um, it's important to then think bigger. Uh, what outcome deserves my attention? Those five words. What outcome deserves my attention? Under all is the land, real, real real estate. Courtney, your friends about to show you how to generate wealth. Get educated, do for yourself. Add a couple notches to your belt. Under all is the land. Under all is the land. The real, real estate. Under all is the land. Under all is the land. Welcome to season three, episode three of Under All is the Land. I am your host, Courtney Polis, here with my rock star co stars in our rock star new studio, Miss Soka Fernald. Hello. And Dominique Madden. Hello. <laughs> We're digging this. Yes, I am so comfy it on the couch. I love it. I'm way it's more beautiful. comfortable. Yeah, and yes. I feel free, liberated from the table. Oh. It's cozy. It's living room vibey, and yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a conversation spot. It's like we moving move from now. from desk job to entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> working from home job, cushy COVID job. <laughs> like cushy but now we have to job. always like coordinate our outfits because you can see legs, maybe shoes. Oh wow! Well, I don't know. Trick. I don't think we're going to see too many legs. Maybe yours because you have such long legs that right there. occupy a lot of the frame. Real I don't estate. know. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, so, Neek, how's everything going? <laughs> Let her swallow her tea first. <laughs> um, I have to swallow my tea or I might spill it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, spill it. Ooh. Oh, man. Everything is definitely everything. I yeah. was 23. I'm really, 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 really ready. <laughs> For this year of the rabbit thing that the to lady start? was talking about. Yeah, she said February. <laughs> February I'm like really hoping for an earlier start yeah. oh, because I have to tell you, again, I've said it before. I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but mm -hmm. I'm realizing that buy buyers have PTSD mm -hmm. um, from bad deals mm -hmm. and um, they are taking it out on the listing they get accepted on mm -hmm. like 100%. My seller on one of my last closings went above and beyond in every conceivable way. And yet the buyers are just unhappy. And then we had a deal where the sellers went above and beyond. But to be fair, that was a little bit more complicated. But it mm -hmm. just feels like it's very difficult to make people feel like they're getting what they paid for, I yeah. guess. Mm -hmm. It's yep. happening to me too right now. It's like, you know, literally the sellers are the nicest people you could ever meet. Like they literally have done everything. Like, and they did it before contingencies were moved. You know, they just went straight for doing all repairs. They did extra repairs. They did so many things. And literally, they probably overbuilt this house already. Like it is one of the best flips that I have ever seen in terms of like completeness. But the buyer is just nitpicking every little tiny thing that she can possibly find. Yeah. And you know, like it's just, it's beyond. I'm like, you know, the, these little things, they are house things. They it's are right. just things it's the that come with being a homeowner. Yeah. Things, yeah. It's the, yeah. It's the buyer's agent helping them? Oh, no, or she's definitely she has encouraging no it. She's, she's definitely encouraging, encouraging it. it. That, that, that's, that's the next thing. thing. I think we need to coach our buyers like, look, mm -hmm. don't be D's in this situation. Right. It's not going to be 100%. Well, nothing I mean, it's is ever 100%. No, nothing's 100%. So but I have also noticed be maybe it's because people are so hungry for deals these days. Like now it feels like we're in a scarcity moment. When it's not, tr it's not really true. It's psychological, no. No. which is kind of what we were talking about and what we're going to talk about today with yeah. mindset. But the idea that you don't know where the next deal is going to come from makes you bend over backwards, not coach your clients right, have no control over them, and just let their fear and paranoia run the show. Yeah, the same is to be said for sellers. Agree. They think we don't get another offer. This is the only thing we have, so let's do what we can. But in reality, it's like, well, it's never not just that one. Right. No. There will be more. But 
Again, right. It, everybody's coming from fear. Fear. And yeah. that's when things don't work. What did Heather say last week on our show? You cannot um, manifest out of fear. Right. You can't yeah. ma you manifest cannot. out of fear. It makes yeah. absolute sense. You know, I remember learning about this with money because, you know, raised the way we were raised. It's like money was always uh, consciousness in our, you know, in our family, Same. in our lives, like everybody, yeah, you know, like who, who isn't born rich, right? Yeah. And um, as I really, whenever I got into real estate, I realized how limiting my idea about money was. It felt like this thing that I could never get enough of. And no matter how hard I worked or how competent I was, I never felt satisfied by my by the reception I was re getting from my bosses and from the reward I was getting for my hard work or the dedication or showing up on time. It never felt like I was getting enough for what I put in. And I was probably right, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it, it does work to the advantage of bosses to have people working really hard who don't think they're good enough. That's the funny thing about money. Mm -hmm. But once you realize you actually are valuable that you do have something to share that is worthwhile that you are a consultant and not just a salesperson that you are that your experience has actually merit to it and you know you know what I mean you realize no I, I I earn every single penny that I make every single penny I make mm -hmm. and I know there are more people available who need my help I know that yeah so I don't feel like oh my god where's the next deal gonna come from I'm like the universe will send me the flow. Like it's, it comes, it goes, it comes, it goes, mm -hmm. but I don't, I'm not holding on to things mm -hmm. so tightly like I did. And I do think that that's alleviated that feeling of scarcity, just yeah. letting it be a flow. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I made a lot this month. Now I can yeah. do something I really wanted to do. Oh, right. I'm not going to make so much next month. Okay. I'm going to tighten the bootstraps mm -hmm. here. Da, da, da. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a flow. Yeah. It's I, like a, it's a cycle, cyclical. It's, yeah. It, it, yeah comes and goes and it comes and goes I yeah. mean the art of it is to not overspend when you're doing really well so then you freak out when the market shifts and right. you feel like you're not gonna be able to pay your mortgage and you know you start letting your clients run the show and then that bleeds into having the other agent and the other seller feel a certain type of way I mean it's like a domino effect mm-hmm yeah yeah and then at the end of it you're sitting there with yourself and your thoughts <coughs> <in> your mind. <clears throat> you know, in your house, trying to have your moment, have your wine and like decompress and you realize how much we take on of other people's emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's kind of a space where like, we don't really talk about it enough. The mental health part of being a real estate agent, mm -hmm. you know. True. I yeah. mean, it's so true. It's yeah. true. It Especially can drive you mad. Yeah. Especially if you're an empath and a real estate agent. So you're feeling everybody's like fears, everybody's like, you know, like high strung feelings and they're like, right. you know, chaotic thoughts and you're taking all that energy on and then yeah. like, where do you get to output it? Yeah, exactly. The gym. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Really. Or meditation doesn't work for me. We need or to axe go axe. Thank you. <laughs> axe throwing. <laughs> that, we need to go to an axe throwing place yes. or a place where you can where take you can a But still, even that's not consistent something. enough to give of you... Of course, that it's just the fun you need, something. Yeah, it's a fun something. Like, I'm energy. down to break a toilet with a hammer or something. There but you go. I'm just saying, like, you know, yeah. I do think you have like to have a constant awareness. Like, I tell myself yeah. in the car when I'm driving, it's their stress, it's not my stress. It's their mm -hmm. stress, it's not my stress. Whenever agents call me and they're freaking out... Or whenever clients call me and they're freaking out, I'm like, it's their fear. It's not my fear. Until it's you their pull fear, out to the curb and you see the client jumping up and down and you're like, whoa, that fear just went into me. <laughs> it's my fear too. Well, well, I try not to I'm let just, it be my fear yeah. too. And it's so funny because Neek is, I was saying to her last night, we went to Top Golf. Okay. We had a, Nico's had a great time. My son had an awesome time, loved it so much. But we, we had a 345 reservation. We, they got there early. Mm -hmm. They pushed our reservation. We finally got a bay. It's like five o'clock. Some other guys come up to our bay and they're like, this is our bay. And then the people that work there were like, I'm sorry, this is their bay. Kicked us out of the bay they just told us to go to. And I was really ready to freaking lose it because now we've been waiting for so long. Mm -hmm. No food. I'm like having hangry. low blood sugar, hangry. You know, it's just miserable. There's no really place for us to sort of like be. And you know, it was just restless and miserable. And then finally they apologized and they made us wait another 15 minutes. And then finally we had our own bay. It was like mm -hmm. mismanaged from top to bottom. And I'm losing it. Mm -hmm. Nika's like, calm down. Like, it's Ooh. gonna be okay. Like, <laughs> okay. And I'm like, okay, you know, cause 
you are funny. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you have the capacity to be the calm down diplomat. And I would actually say in our family, you have that diplomatic quality. Like you serve that purpose, you know, in our family. But when you get worked up, man, it's like <laughs> the, you can't calm this girl down. Like she That's is on true. fire. She's on fire. That is true. Well, you know what? Like I try to keep a cool head as long as I can. But right. when people keep pushing and pushing and pushing what is actually a flame breathing dragon inside you know <laughs> yeah. at one point it's i'm like... gonna put those fucking flames in your face you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like the pin was pulled out of the grenade <laughs> oh i try i try to keep it cool i try to keep it cool because sometimes you need that you know like the thing that like yesterday right yeah. the thing that was that I was trying to keep cool was like, you know, I was just happy to be there with you guys right. and enjoy that moment. I know. It was like a break from a stressful day and it was stressful. Like those, those honestly, the employees could have given a funk. Like right. they honestly didn't they care. They didn't care. It didn't seem like they were making any effort to try to make what was clearly done wrong on their end, which is, you know, I mean, it's it a new Top Golf so in El Segundo. Just saying. It's a new Tom call. <laughs> so, you know, like they're probably getting their systems together and trying mm -hmm. to figure that out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was so mismanaged and yeah. it was like, and it, they put it on us, you know? It wasn't like, oh, let us, let us fix let this. Let us make this right yeah. for you. It was, it like, was like, just like, wait longer. Yeah. Move from this bay. Yeah. Your you know, reservation's been pushed out an hour, you know, and now we're switching you out after you waited like 20 minutes beyond the hour yeah. to mm, get sat. Nice. And now you have to wait another 20 minutes. Right. But you know Did what? You get the manager yeah. involved and get some free top golf. Well, we <laughs> sent the cooler head, uh, Sam, <laughs> that negotiation. <laughs> And we did get some free gameplay, so cool. that was good. Cool. They should have done that. I mean, they yeah. they really should have. But but my point is, we all have our limits. Yeah. To where you know, mm -hmm. and yesterday I was just I was ready for my lid to blow, and I feel like you know I I guess I would say like how we go through our day does affect our family life. It does affect the stuff that happens afterwards and our temper. And you know, I was hot tempered last night. Even still, you know, it's just a little bit of a frustrating night. Mm -hmm. no, no matter what so that just kind of added insult to injury so today we are honored to have this guest laura st john she is going to teach us how to use our mind to set better goals to achieve success to have more control it's a mindset game this thing and i'm really excited mm -hmm. to hear what she has to say and how we can apply it to our real estate careers can't so, wait welcome laura st john <laughs> Welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you here all month long. We have been talking about the power of our mind. Um, Neek got us on this trip with neuroplasticity. She watched a podcast and now it's all we can talk about. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. I mean, it is changing we, our lives a little bit, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a, like, you know, in, in real estate, they say there's the business of the business, which is like the higher level stuff. And then there's the day to day. And I will say that recently it feels to me like I'm much more engaged in the day to day than that like bigger mindset stuff. So I made a commitment this year. One of my goals is to keep being like being aware of my focus on the business of the business stuff way more than uh, being in the weeds, fighting little tiny stupid wars that I don't need to stress myself out about. And so I feel like that even just mm -hmm. that shift for me is going to be huge so what we're we're really excited to hear from you is how you you got here and how you can coach other people into their highest self their best self and like you said get them unstuck exactly yeah so i mean, I, I consider myself like a professional unstucker uh, a lot of times when you're feeling really powerless or you're feeling really stuck on um, you're in a limited mindset so my job is to help people see past those struggles into you know the results that they do want and access that version of them faster how did you get here how did you choose this career i think this career chose me okay um, ever since i was a very little girl i've had a wild imagination and whenever anyone came up to me feeling stuck or that like had any kind of question i could use the power of my imagination to like see the next step that they needed to keep them on their path so I've you know, also recognized a lot of times when people were in like massive struggle, even life or death situations, that they held a more positive outcome for themselves and I could see how the power of their mind led them there. So I had some interesting personal experiences as well as then professional experiences that led me to where I am today. Okay, okay. And 
coaching celebrities and you know with like, celebrities mm -hmm. are they as like psychologically messed up as we think they are <laughs> i mean what whenever i hang up with someone who you know has millions of followers or whatever i am always like you know i know my job is to reach the masses not just the people who also find me in terms of celebrities and athletes and stuff but they are, they have the same struggles magnified right mm -hmm. um, it is the same exact stuff but on sometimes a much bigger level because they're in the public uh, just mm -hmm. a couple of days ago i was talking with somebody they said that oh it was the agent on this house i'm an escrow on the listing agent he lives in the house that michael jackson's doctor mm -hmm. used to live in mm -hmm. and he had a michael jackson had a studio in there a dance studio oh wow. And i'm like wow that's so cool you got michael jackson's like there? dance vibes in there the studio's still there. Oh, fun. And he's like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, come on. You know, like, I, I, I said, I, I really honestly don't think Michael Jackson did it. That's just me. I just don't. <laughs> okay. But here's a more important piece of it. I'm like, this man has been so traumatized through his life that he, you know, if he finds children safer, more honest, I bet that's to some degree the way that a lot of celebrities feel where you have sycophants and people who always want something from you. You can't get a straight answer. You can't trust anybody. And then there are very few people like your family or something you think you can trust. And even sometimes those relationships don't result in like pot, like Britney Spears can't trust her family. Like people, mm. it must be very isolating. That's what I meant. Like it must be a mind fuck on some level to have that much to, every to, every move yes. you make could be a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, every word you say yeah. could be a lawsuit. Also, every interaction. Every person, also, every person that is talking to you think they're interested in me because of who I am. Oh, yeah, it's hard to and know who's genuine. Me. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. difficult. How do you have real friends if your name is Brad yeah. Pitt? And right, maybe right. you don't share who you really are with right. very many people anyway. Right. Well, I would so, say like imagine. Because it'll end up in some tabloids at one point if mm. that person gets mad at you. Yeah. yeah, I would say imagine your own problems or struggles that like are even sometimes silently on your shoulders and mm. none, nothing for them is very silent. So mm. everything gets exposed and it's just, you know, it's a lot. Um, I can't even walk naked through the house. It doesn't seem like it's worth money. Three. No, this <laughs> easy, this, these days it's as easy as just taking a sound bite and that oh, could gosh. ruin someone. Everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so if, if there's a celebrity, because maybe there are celebrities watching this show right now who need some mindset help. So in those situations where it's like a huge, like everything's magnified, people feel very depressed. I mean, there are a lot of people who commit suicide and that kind of thing. What are some of the tips that you give people in that situation? I mean, first of all, we're all human. It's like power of struggle is something that every single person can relate to. There's no one on this planet Earth who has not struggled at some point in some area of their life. So not to normalize it, but first like a ding ding like moment of awareness that mm -hmm. you're normal, like this is just magnified and it doesn't mean that any person here in the audience is not feeling the same size of a struggle on their shoulders. Um, it's just what do you do in the face of struggle? Do you, you know, can you see beyond it or do, are you just feeling stuck in the down spiral of it? So all my tools are to show people very like step-by-step -step how to's because there's so much philosophy out there mm -hmm. on mindset. Like a lot of people are like, oh, yeah. well just, you know, get rid of your limiting beliefs, just be more confident. But people are like, but how? So right. what I created was the but how um, through very like tangible steps for people because I don't think like discounting anyone's struggles. I think they're all, you know, they're all so like, personal, personal to and, ourselves. Yeah. And so sometimes like the ones that we don't want to share publicly are the toughest ones. So how do you develop the mindset again to see past that struggle to the the actual reality that you want to create? So I kind of got known in the manifesting world because it really is the power of your thoughts and your har harnessing your emotional strength and your actions towards an outcome that you desire. So you're really like moving. I'm like kind of the coach for the now moving forward. I don't get like, I don't poke you don't at get people's stuck problems. in the back in the past. I, I, but there's like a lot of modalities and therapies that, you know, that do. Yeah, they stuff. try to like get That's in there. Yeah. Yeah, I totally I, get that. I'm here for the now moving forward. Like, what do you want? Everything led you here. Tap into self trust, like, not to diminish the size of that, but how do you start to see past that and develop the version that you, that you want to become? Did you do landmark? So, no. Do you have ever done any of those kinds of S no. and all that stuff? No. No. It's this is all I, just came from you. It completely was a, a experience that I grew an education company to hundreds of locations. I worked with kids who are like the most truthful beings on the planet. Like right. you know, like they're they cut right to it. Right. They can like sniff right. out what's real and what's not yeah, real. Yeah, totally. Like, so kids, I always say, taught me everything. I grew an ed tech company with my family to over seven hundred locations. 
Um, and then I grew a fitness business with my husband. And again, people would come in for a physical experience, but I could tell we were shifting them emotionally and mentally. So I'd create all these mindset classes around that, um, you know, and just how do you keep shifting the physical reality mentally and emotionally first inside out. Okay. So let's bring it to real estate. Yeah. Yes. First to real estate agents, mm-hmm. because for people who are your clients who really absorb a lot of other people's fear, paranoia, you know, I know we, we wear a million hats. Mm-hmm. We, we, and we always have to be super, we can't just like be expressive. We can't say what we want to say like the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to be classier politically than correct. that and yeah. politically correct <laughs> and follow the rules and do that. And sometimes you just want to say, hey, you're being a douchebag right now. Like, Mm -hmm. stop being crazy. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. So we have to, like, be, uh, like I said, classy, diplomatic. diplomatic, And we have to try and put ourselves in other people's shoes in order for us to psychologically be able to cope Mm -hmm. with the volume of emotional weight that is put on us every day. And I Mm -hmm. know that sounds heavy. And I don't think people who are just getting their license understand this part right. of real estate yet. But those of us who've been in the business for over a decade and do volume, we do. And it's hard. Right. I could see how sometimes like, um, it could feel like, especially for maybe new people starting out, that you're under attack like when, when you're meant to be on the same side as oh, yeah. the client. And suddenly they're poking at you for oh, what yeah. you are doing or not what? doing or you know that you need to be, do, be doing more of something. And yep. Sometimes that, you feel defensive, yeah. like your clients don't feel necessarily like you're fighting hard enough for them mm-hmm. when you're really trying to keep mm-hmm. it realistic for them. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it feels like you are so on the side of your client that you are at war. Yeah, I would you know? say in those instances, it's really from a mindset perspective, um, it's important to then think bigger. Uh, what outcome deserves my attention? Those five words. What outcome deserves my attention? If you find that you are fighting against what you desire with them, and then you're not thinking big enough. You actually have to go broader to the outcome being like, I imagine myself you know, handing the keys, signing the paperwork, and you gotta keep you know, visualizing that experience that you both want. So there's, a, there's an outcome that you both desire. Mm-hmm. And you gotta be in the energy of that version of you. So you don't tolerate and all that stuff like otherwise they're gonna come at you and they're gonna test you just like kids in a classroom mm-hmm. would test a teacher yeah they're gonna test like how well you hold the line like mm-hmm. when you draw a line you know of your own self-respect and mm-hmm. you know are they asking you to change your behaviors to please them mm-hmm. or can you shift all the behaviors towards the outcome you want and that's really the direction you need to be going do in. you think like setting um like verbally actually setting it like setting outcomes with your clients it makes sense to do saying something like listen i'm just gonna let you know throughout this process there are going to be times when blah 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 but just so you know, yes. this is what my objective is, the same as yours. So we might accomplish getting there like different ways because I have different experience and this is my science. Totally. Yeah, something I really mean, I just came back, I just did a vision casting event um, up at Google. I work with this amazing team, same thing. Like, so any company, you're always having to think bigger, go broader, like set the expectations, set the vision. You have to be really good, you're vision casting. They're buying a dream, you know, like you're right. helping them like with that process that's an amazing thing they're going to create it life is. in this new home i know and, that's you know, what we love i mean that's the part we love exactly. is the happy part so that's the part but you got to the getting there you got to go through yeah. so much fear and torture to get there yeah. sometimes really i mean i think i, I don't know if i'm I, it's not all the time okay I'm, I'm being a little bit dramatic to make the point but it's like i do think that sometimes people make the process very hard on themselves and we're not mindset coaches so you know we can give our coaching but maybe there's a tool in there absolutely i would say the tool should be set from the beginning of setting an expectation of you know what you are willing to do not willing to do hey i answer the phone until 9 30 p.m or you know 10 p.m or you know what i mean or otherwise you're always going to be at the mercy right of the like but but hey i'm i'm on your side and i think that's so important with any team and any company to always be like I'm on your side. Like right. you know, we're 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 moving towards we're moving the ball down the field to the same to right, goal. same destination. Yeah. 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 And maybe have that be something that we discuss with clients in the beginning. Yeah. Absolutely. Have that have yeah. a little mind coach session. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's just a, a few like notes from the mind notes. coach. Yeah. Exactly. A mindset coach yes. on buying real estate. So okay. We'll or selling real estate. Together, right? But there's, our goal is to get you keys. My goal is to get you keys. Let's work together exactly. to get you those keys. And throughout the transaction is something we can remind them. Remember how we talked about getting yeah. to that goal? Yeah. Let's work together to do right. that. Right. right. And then maybe that will 
remind some people when they get a little bit caught up in their own fear right. during a transaction right. that yeah. That could be really helpful. Yeah. Right. Like I coach a lot of pro athletes, the same idea. It is like, how do I handle um, something when it, like that that person is pushing against, uh, you got to mentally rehearse it. So all of the real estate agents should be mentally rehearsing when adversity pops up or when something difficult and a challenge is going to pop up, we already know it. Are you going to have the same reaction? You're going to throw your hands up in the air? You're just going to talk about the clients and blah, 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 blah. Or are you going to be like, but we're in the problem solving business. We're in the, you know, home like dream business. Like you can shift the whole mm -hmm. narrative. narrative to, of course this is gonna happen, but mm -hmm. this is how we handle these hurdles. This is what makes us different as a relative. You know what this reminds me of? This one time I remember yeah. having, I don't remember where it came from, but somebody said, why do, why do you think somebody's not gonna cut you off in traffic? Like where in the book of life was it like, by the way, they're courteous drivers. You'll never get cut off. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they were saying that is, is to, to show how ridiculous it is to get so upset when someone cuts you off as if you've been wronged, yeah. as mm -hmm. if like, like, how could this happen? You know, you're flicking people off and you're, totally. you know, you know, and you yeah. get so upset about it, but it's like, nobody promised you that this was going to be, yeah. that you were never going to get cut off. And so that's stupid, it, it, th like no, you're similar. Right. You expect the unexpected. Right. You, like if you I like know what that's going to happen, like, is that really putting you in the best mindset? Like, is that really going to throw you into the most positive swirl? Or like yeah. when something bad happens, think to yourself, you know, is it normal for something like, where, where was I promised along the way that there wouldn't be something that comes up? Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. We know how to solve things, you know? Mm -hmm. If there was a problem, yo, we'll solve it. Mm -hmm. well, most people are really nitpicky on like when they get the red light, when they get like the, t you know, someone cuts you off. Versus yeah. being nitpicky on like, hey, I just got like five green lights in a row. Like a lot of us don't celebrate our accomplishments right. mm -hmm. as much as we nitpick That's our true. problems. Right. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yes. Um, how long does it take to change your mind set? I like, I would say in a perspective flip, you can do it immediately. You can have these aha moments because they say, they say it takes 21 days to change a physical habit, you know, like, like smoking know, or something like that, like start 21 days to, you know, shift things habitually. However, um, I always tell people like, you know, who are in my mindset classes and programs, all it takes is a change in perspective. So if you are open to expanding your perspective, thinking different, you know, expanding your mindset, you can expand yourself quickly. Like it just, you know, I'm, I'm the one that like generates new results fast because I don't believe it has to be, it might've taken you 40 years to get stuck but, or decades of mm -hmm. stuck in this. Does right. that mean like the moment yeah. you wake up, define the line of change and you're like, I'm gonna tap into solutions versus exhaust myself and my problems. Right. So, so many people are just exhausting themselves in their problems all It's day. so easy to do, isn't it? it? Is, I mean, I, my grandfather easy. said something to me. He was my grandma's husband and I hadn't really known him very much in my life. And then I met him when I was like 18 in an adult way. You you know and he said well you know Courtney how are you doing out there in LA and I was like this is Bob and I said I'm I'm all right you know it's a struggle like I was really broke and just you know working five jobs and taking acting class and whatever and he said well beware the ecstasy and the inertia of defeat mm -hmm. and I was like whoa that is really deep but I think I understand it to mean there's a pleasure in being a victim. There's a pleasure in feeling like you're defeated somehow. There's something in there, in the energy of it, where you 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 secretly enjoy complaining. I mean, you there's something well, in there. There's a camaraderie that happens in our society. I just gonna say, I'm from New Jersey, yeah. and like I'm super like strong, like Jersey. Even though I live now in Malibu, I'm like feeling the vacay vibes now, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like there's like the directness of, you know, mm -hmm. I, I go back and sometimes like it's like this, there's a lot of people that are complaining or unhappy and like mm -hmm. you could really feel like different, you know, ways of, am I going to participate in that? Does it make me feel good? Does it not make me feel good? Mm -hmm. Do I want to get in on this? But what you, your grandfather said is that inertia, a lot of people right. like need to get things to be so bad to be like, see, like to, here's all the evidence now I'm ready for change. Like I'm so bad now on my diet or exercise or I'm so bad now mm -hmm. in my bank account that I like you're forcing yourself to change because you're used to like a yo-yo effect mm -hmm. versus like you can you don't have to you don't get have to hit to the bottom to, to push change. the inertia in the other direction you right. could just I kind of developed like the life of the better and better or the better than expected where you can just start riding a wave 
like consciously by putting more effort into what you're participating in, where your thoughts are going, where your energy is going, where your outcomes are focused. I love that where your thoughts are going. It is so important. It is you move into the directions of your most dominant thoughts. Exactly. But that I'm, is easier said than done. It's a yeah. practice. It's a practice. It's a practice. It's a reminder, constant reminder. Do that. You know, be more mindful. Be more. Most people present. are not super aware of their thoughts, but their right. thoughts are coming in based on what they're already feeling. It's just they weren't knowing they were frustrated until their frustrated thoughts started pouring in. Uh -huh. And then it's like creates that loop between mm -hmm. like frustrated thoughts and frustrated feelings that they just don't know how to get out of. Uh -huh. I'm curious, how does, so, you know, one of the things that we talked about is that like as agents, we receive all of these energies and all of these fears and all of that. And I'm curious, like as agents, right? Like how, how do we whenever the reception of the energy is so draining, mm -hmm. find the energy to put into changing our like perspective in a more positive way? That's a great question. It's an indication usually if you're being, like your energy's feeling like it's being sucked, <laughs> mm -hmm. that it's usually then that you are participating in the energies of the problems that you're being brought, mm -hmm. where you, what you need to do in those moments is create a clearer, more defined vision for yourself and who you want to be in your role as a real estate agent and then protect that role no at all costs like you got to be the guardian i always say of your own vision how you want to hold yourself when that line like you know if you draw a line that line goes around you i always say like you don't have to draw lines about pe around people's behaviors they're always going to come testing you most people are like feverishly being like don't act like this or don't do it like this and then i'll be happy but that's not what you want to do otherwise you'll feel powerless in those moments if you really want to maintain the integrity of your energy it is about crafting a very clear vision of where you want to be going in terms of your career and how you see yourself how you want to walk in the room no matter how people are behaving around you and then if they behave that way again you can already have mentally rehearsed some of the expectations and things knowing you know there's going to be challenges but how are you going to hold that positive space how are you going to respond to those challenges? Are you going to get sucked down into it? Or are you going to respond from a level of like, yeah, I see it, like in a more matter of fact way, but like, but this is where I see ourselves still going beyond it. So it's a, a language shift that helps whoever is bringing the problem to you, like to help them visualize the solution that you're holding onto. It's, it's a process. I love that. <laughs> you know, I appreciate that answer because I feel like as as agents, that's like one of the biggest hurdles is trying to like keep your inner peace mm -hmm. while being like in chaos constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that's yeah, that's, that's super like helpful. a life hurdle. <laughs> it's a li yeah, it's, it's like true. how do I set a line and hold my line and yeah. then not move it when someone's asking me to tolerate something I don't want to tolerate or give up something that I don't want to give up and respecting the line is respecting yourself. It's deep. That it is. is. Deep and it also is respecting yourself but and respecting that line. But sometimes you feel like you have to please your client. Right. And then we're more willing to maybe make this line, maybe this like an imaginary circle around us. Yes. Make it a little shorter. Exactly. Because we feel like we want to please our client. So there's that little dance happening mm -hmm. too. Mm-hmm. But really holding the line is the thing. Holding the line, but not in a power struggle way, mm -hmm. in a protective way. Mm -hmm. That's why I said like be guardian of your vision because when you step into it, you're actually stepping into a greater level of self-esteem, self-confidence. You just like, you, you kind of like demand, this is how I am, this is how things roll. Like I don't get knocked off by these problems. I hear your problem, but if you respond in a more matter of fact energy, like I hear you, they need to be heard. You know, I see that problem exists, it needs to be resolved. But this is the direction, again, back to the original expectations that we're all moving this towards something that we both want, the keys to this house in your hand, you know, signed on the dotted line, all done. <clears throat> you know, you just gotta keep reminding them, here's the vision. Of course, mm -hmm. these ups and downs happen, but like, this is my role in this process for you. And the more you give up that line and don't respect it, you create these power struggles, you actually will manifest more challenges. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. That is interesting. I know people like that who make bigger problems for themselves. I mean, I think, I think it happens all the time. I'm not just talking real estate. I just think there are people who like, 
they 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 aren't in this in the energy of the solution part mm -hmm. you know they're, they're mm -hmm. testing themselves versus trusting themselves yeah and those mm -hmm. tests are a test of their own strength so that it's very often if in a like world of manifesting where you're like why do i keep getting this setback or why do i keep like receiving this challenge mm -hmm. and it's like well where is your participation in it? Like mm -hmm, sometimes things mm -hmm. come your way again because you gotta set boundaries and lines and different things and like decide that you're ready to rise above the challenge, rise over it. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes I agree with you that sometimes people get so practiced in always having challenges or complaining about things that it yeah. becomes their way of being. Right, mm -hmm. and totally. It's wrong, and it themselves. keeps going wrong for the yeah. same person. Right, it's like they yeah. make well, things know. go wrong. Yeah. Like, of course this happened to you <laughs> right. because you ask for yeah. it. Yeah, you're, right. you're, you're, you're you already need it putting to a like, snowball in that direction. Yeah, to give yeah. you that yeah. that life force to have yeah. something so you to, can complain. So you can yeah. complain about yeah. it. You like it. Whereas totally. like, you could use it differently. I have one tool called the flip it list that I do with everybody where you just fold a piece of paper in half and on the top right flip it. And on the left side, like once it's folded, you write clearly don't want. And you write one, two, and three. The three things that are like bothering you the most, the three problems that you might be experiencing as a real estate agent, like all the things that might be going wrong. But then you can draw lines through the page and on the right side, you write a clearly desire. And you look at your top three problems and you could be like, wow, that's what's sucking my energy. Mm -hmm. Is that really what, where I wanna be participating? And so through the flip it list, you can identify the three solutions, which is the exact opposite to your problems. Right. And you can see like, am I pouring my energy on this side or am I pouring my energy on this side? And it's right. one of my like easiest tools for people to learn to be like, where are you putting your energy? Where are your thoughts going? Where are you moving things towards the outcome you want? Or are you always fighting against what you don't want? Mm -hmm. Most people are fighting against what they don't want. So we have to always also to remind ourselves yeah. when we get on a negative track, like, hey, yeah. Right. Flip it. Flip Pull it. it back in. Flip it. Yeah, it's normal. <laughs> but there's it. a flip it. It is a scientific fact. There's a positive to every negative. Mm -hmm. And that challenge might be coming to you to accelerate you to the positive. Like sometimes the problem of like a leaky pipe or something in the house is only to like fix the plumbing. You know, like it's still like it could Most be flipped answers. to you know, solution. <laughs> it, like, you know, we don't love it happening, but right. sometimes it accelerates you to the actual solution that you know, it might be best for everyone. So don't think that a negative is always wrong. Sometimes it's there to prompt you. Mm. What do you think are the most popular limiting beliefs you come across? I think that one of the most popular limiting beliefs is I am not enough, so let me do more. And so a lot of times people are overworking mm -hmm. and like a need to prove themselves energy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to themselves. Or one another or like if I get this accolade then I'll feel better about myself oh yeah when you could have really just felt better about yourself without the accolade and all the overwork and you'd actually attract it faster so mm -hmm. you know in terms of me accelerating people to their vision it's usually one of the fastest things because I can teach people to access the feeling that goes with the thoughts they want that like manifest them into the dream house like that's how i got to malibu california from my little apartment in denver i was like i would look out and i'd be like this is not what i want i do not want to see mountains i do not want to be freezing you know <laughs> like but it's just you know you do the flip it and then you keep recognizing like what do i want to feel oh i want to feel abundant i want to feel you know whatever the ocean would make me feel i want to feel calm and peaceful so i started to access the feelings that would accelerate me to the vision of living this beach life in this mm -hmm. beautiful place and I reverse manifested the house even, that the same, same method. I would be like, what, where's the house that wants my three boys like mm -hmm. wrestling right. in the mm -hmm. living room and mm -hmm. you know, the energy of that. So you, if you can tap into the feelings that the thing would give you, like you would get yourself there faster because a lot of people in terms of limiting beliefs think that like it has to be a struggle, it has to be hard. And I'm not saying that challenges don't come. Right. It doesn't have to be hard and long. Like, it doesn't have to be like this long, arduous process. You could get there fast. Well, don't you think there are industries that make it seem like it has to be hard because their money is based on it being hard? Yeah, I mean, you could even say me in the coaching industry. I could be like, oh, and this, and you have to follow me because, and I have a very different approach. I'm like, you have all the answers inside of you. You have every solution you need. Like, I'm here to just untap like your power. Like, so you don't need me. You know, otherwise, right. like, it would be just like even in my industry, like, oh, you have this problem, I have the answers. I'm right. like, no, 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 you have the answers. Well, I mean, I'm we're so, so much that we, if we're missing this piece, that we're, there's a pill for that, or there's yeah. a, a psych, psychiatrist for that, or yeah. there's a, you know, yeah. there's, there's something, something out there. Yeah. Maybe it's in my skin, maybe it's 
I need a Brazilian butt lift. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Something's going to make me feel the better, way, better. yeah, better yeah. about myself. Yeah. And, back and they're the selling it to us, you yeah. know, as yeah. opposed to us right. just waking up in the morning and right. accepting that we we do have, we have it power. inside of us. Yeah. 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 Well, what happens? How disruptive is it if we all are oh, there? It would, it would yeah. destroy it. Huge industries. Yeah. If we would wake up one day and realize and love we're perfect the way we are. Yeah. I mean, I think things are shifting. I believe yeah. things that people are like looking internally now and being like, all right, there's got to be a piece that like I'm part of the equation here. How can I, you know, again, remove these limiting beliefs? Another one that people have is people are obsessed with how. Like, let me show me the path. Like, exactly. right. show me the tool. Right. Let me buy the thing. Like, right. Can you just give it to me so I don't have to do the hard work right. and find it inside myself to unhinge this myself? So, um, you know, people are very obessed with, and so I've created a how to map because that's what I they knew, wanted. Like, from a logical brain perspective, it feeds the part of the brain that's analytical, wants to measure, that wants to know, like, the framework. But it's usually very limiting. You know, when I like help people get to another stratosphere or manifest like beyond their wildest dreams, like like seeing the path how is going to limit you only to that path. Like, right. You won't get to the next stratosphere of your potential. So it's kind of a fun dance that I teach people to open their heart to themselves and like tap into their emotional power and strength of the vision and dreams that are inside their heart, but also like release the how. Like when you want to hyper control the process because things are starting to go in the wrong negative direction and most people then like take ultra amounts of control mm -hmm. to like hyper control. That was me like years ago being like, I could, I could just, you know, I could just do everything. And then you get exhausted and scattered mm -hmm. and overwhelmed. Oh yeah. But it's really a releasing of like the how it's going to happen and put your energy more again back into the clear vision that you want to manifest. So most people are not doing that. They're, they're not like, well, I'm like, what color shirt will I be wearing when I open up my dream house in Malibu and like I'm in the kitchen. You what's, manifested what's your my shirt? cutting board? You like, did? Yeah. Oh. And I started with a cutting board. Like you can, like a real estate agent in New Jersey, when I first sold my house there, like gave me this cutting board and I'm like, this is going to be the cutting board in my future dream house. And I've literally carried it to like apartments, Denver, all over Wow. The but like you can bring these pieces to you and be like, I don't know how it's going to happen, but this cutting board's going to live in this future house. So there's I like love lots that. of little like techniques you could do like that. Love that. Love that. How can people find you and sign up for your courses? I do um, a, like a private group coaching experience where I coach people online. And mm -hmm. then I have like online digital courses on my website, which is Strong Confident Living. Dot com. Strongconfidentliving.com. Yep. Okay, do you also great. do one on one coaching? I, in I coach, um, you know, a, a few. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I know my purpose here on the planet is to reach like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I design courses and digital content that mm -hmm. can, you know, reach tons of people at once. I have thousands of people in my classes at once, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but I do do a little bit of one on one, mm -hmm. but not a lot. I mean, you know, I'll have different, like, people reach out to me and mm -hmm. yeah but it's, do you do you work with children or teenagers I do so yeah I, have, I even coach all the way to Australia I coach some kids on the national team in Australia for gymnastics wow. like, it's like yeah I coach people people literally find me from all over the world it's That's it's amazing wonderful. literally <laughs> this should be a class in schools yeah, yeah this it should is. be so a I, thing I launched be. mindset school um, okay. this year and that is like my experience where I coach uh, in like these weekly classes that I offer where I post my digital content, people can watch it on their own or they can, you know, hop on video with me where I do a live Q&A and I do a workshop once a month for kids and teens. I, I love that. I bring that to so my cool. daughter's yeah. school. Oh, I love, yeah, I think this yeah. should be required. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. These girls would need this so much. Oh, they yeah. absolutely they need They have it. a health class where they discuss all, where it's mm -hmm. getting more into that field, but yes. I think something like this is yeah. not part of no. it. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. It should be. Yeah, for sure. Because I think like, you know, like, I was listening to this uh, Audible book this morning and, you know, one of the things that they were talking about, it's called the 5 a.m. club, which is like, you know, mm -hmm. a popular book. But, um, you know, one of the things that they were talking about is how adults become like, you know, like, you know, you start out with this very open mindset as a kid, you know, kind of like I can do anything, I can be anything. But as the world beats you down into a box mm -hmm. you lose that mindset and it's just like if, if they were taught this this way of thinking yes 
it could get them away from ever getting into the box that now you have to mm-hmm. find your way out of, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. But do you think it has a shift been happening lately where, where it's not as... I know when I grew up in the 80s in Germany, I mean, it's definitely box. It's mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. don't stick your head up too far. Just, you know, yeah, yeah. have good grades and that's all you I need to do. I think people are still yeah. in their boxes Is 100%. It, but I mean, you wouldn't think that this, like, you don't think that things have shifted a little bit? No, I think that's why people are on oh, getting pills no. and are suicidal and depressed and shooting each other up. But the out awareness. Gas stations by my house. You right, know? But the awareness <laughs> that we people have are happy. Now, I feel like I never heard these things in the 80s or 90s about that's all so, those yeah, I mean, I started designing my mindset classes in 2010 okay. with the intent that I'm like, maybe in 2020, in tw- 10 years, the world will start being ready for my content. I had no idea what was going to happen in 2020, but I started developing all my mindset classes then. So, like, I do think, you know, if you said mindset stuff back then, like, no one even, it's okay. manifesting, it's kind of a good buzz of like what's happening now. People are like, mm-hmm. how do I manifest? You know, how do I create a new result? Mm-hmm. Like, are my thoughts powerful? You know, where so am I putting my focus slowly. energy? I do. I, I mean, it depends on where you, what you tap into. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a shift happening. I think there's a lot of destruction happening, and I think that's opening our eyes to like what can we do to create change, massive change. Yeah. So yeah. I also think there used to be things uh, for for change, self change, like whether it was religion or mm-hmm. cults or mm-hmm. you know self help workshops or like there were all these things where people would talk about things in the past. I really think it started with religion. Like that was a place where you could be reborn. Mm -hmm. And now I think so many people have gone away from and seen the kind of con in a lot of of religion. Yeah, of of a lot of, yeah, yeah, religions, people, you know, and so they're looking for something now, maybe, but they, but there are so many things to sell them. I mean, you can, you know, so I think this idea that you actually have these tools inside yourself and once you recognize them and you had that, you can always use that. You don't have to keep, tithing mm-hmm. you know? and the amazing thing about shifting your mindset is that you realize you can go from powerless to powerful is that like you can make the flip from like where you're feeling weak to where you're feeling strong and there is a like there's a there's a road map you know in terms of getting there that is a lot simpler than most people think that it, it like imagination and intuition and where your thoughts are going and what your outcomes are you know that you're outlining just bringing that more into a greater awareness can really shift things quickly. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, say your website one more time. It's strongconfidentliving.com. Strongconfidentliving.com. You have an IG? Yep. So it's Laura St. John underscore 44. And on TikTok, Laura St. John kind of growing really big on TikTok. Oh, okay. Really all my little videos, all my little one minute snippets. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. We'll put all yeah. that in the show notes. Thank <laughs> you so much for yeah. joining and us. We'll give your uh, listeners a special, like to start. Oh, oh a special. Yeah, special. Okay. Yeah. So just check it out. Great. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much you. for being on Thank our you. show. Okay, we're not getting You know, any career. Has that. that you will have your challenges? You right. Will well, need coping. When, you will need to figure out how to manifest or have or better even better than coping. Better than coping. It's just, like be in the solution. Like yeah, I love that what she said. Solution. Being in the solution because we can dig deeply into the problems. I mean, mm. we can talk all day about a particularly annoying thing or something mm-hmm. that frustrates us. You know, but it's that's easy. And I think the harder work is being like, yeah, that happened. And we'll fix it. And yeah. let's go have dinner with our kids and our families yeah. and enjoy, you know, playing top golf, even though the management messed it up. Yeah. And nobody ever promised me it was going to be better than that. You know, it was like, why am I so disappointed? Also, the <laughs> fact that you can change your thinking so fast. It's just right. like one, one thing. Yeah. Like, it's just one thing. Just, it has to and I think that shifts your whole energy. Yeah. I can see how it could do that. Yeah. Because even me in that act of, of whenever I receive information that kind of like hurts my feelings or, um, or is meant to hurt my feelings, more like that, mm. I can see when people are trying to intentionally hurt me. Mm. I'm strong. People know that. And I think that strength allows for people who are petty or, you know, like, you know, clicky or something. They, they like to attack that energy. Mm. And so I feel like sometimes... I get that, Mm -hmm. but I don't let it inside. All I do is acknowledge you're trying to do it. Mm -hmm. Mentally, I'm like, I see you trying to make me feel a certain type of way. I'm not going for it, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm just not. I don't have Mm -hmm. any space in my energy Mm -hmm. for that negativity. I just don't have it. 
Yeah. But yeah, I mean, definitely with pregnancy hormones and um, and the challenges of this market together, it's been <laughs> it's been harder to keep it all together. Yeah. I think the last couple of years have just been really intense, <laughs> really intense, just overall with like pandemic things yeah. and then, you know, and then just getting back into the flow of like, you know, well, whatever normalcy looks like. But, you know, like I, I want to take what she said and just all the things that I'm learning, because I feel like a lot of this is coming up, like yeah. with the podcast mm -hmm. that, you know, that we talked about and, yep. you know, like just different books that I'm you know listening to or reading or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. But I want to I want to apply it more personally, you know, not yeah. just in regards Work, to business because to your personal I am life. not just business. No, mm -hmm. I am not just not. a realtor. I'm a human, and I mm. think the problem is you're that once super you, human. Once you are in a position, yeah. once you're in a job position, all of a sudden you are that job. Yes. You're an editor. You're a photographer. You're a videographer. But are you you? You know right. what I mean? Right. Am I me? And I'm not me right now. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's what I want to dig to. So I'm like, I want to take what she just said, and I want to flip it. I want to flip all this. You know what yeah. I mean? Into a more into the original version of myself that I used to love. Yeah. But you know I think, but I mean? that I think that will happen when we re when we can figure out a better way to deal with all the things. Then it will free up the time to be you, yeah. and it'll be it'll free up the time for me. Or the personally. emotional yeah. energy. That's I, the thing. Yeah, I, yeah, the emotional, the emotional energy, energy. I have to free up. Yeah, yeah. Because it. it is heavy. Yeah. It is a weighted blanket that covers you all day. Yeah. Right. Like that is right. what I need. That's to. what yeah. you need to get rid of. Yeah. I can't it's wait the, to meet the, the new you. Or the well, it'll be a reintroduction. The old you, yeah. yeah you're gonna I've be buying me little clothes and loving me, <laughs> <laughs> like you used to. That's what I used to do <laughs> when she's a little baby. <laughs> no, well, but seriously, it's just taking more time. Yeah. Also, like addressing your partner at home, not not always being sidetracked. Right. Being able when the kids walk up to me, I'm usually be like, present. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And this yeah. time, be, I'm going to make a decision of being like, okay, I'm gonna just stop Put this what I'm down. doing. And look at you. And, yeah. Okay. What is it you're telling me? Right. And be there, present. Right. Right. That's yeah. the hardest thing. And that is the thing that I. Need well, let's to hold each other accountable, on. and we'll hold you guys accountable yes. too. Thank you for sitting in with us on this living room version of Under All Is the Land. I'm your host Courtney Polis, and we will see you next time. See you next, see you next time. Under all is the land, real, real real estate. Courtney, your friends, about to show you how to generate wealth. Get educated, do for yourself. Add a couple notches to your belt. Under all.